And now it's, uh, is it still Hanukkah? No, I, I had to look that up. It's you not. <laughs> uh, well, too bad, because right now we're going over the latest Your Old Droog album, Jewelry. Jewelry. We get put <laughs> emphasis on the Jew. I found it out. <laughs> uh, Your Old Droog is a Brooklyn, Ukrainian, American MC. Uh, he had a great 2019. This technically falls in 2019. Yeah. Uh, where he really perfected his style as like kind of a, a I don't know like a dustier a dustier voice a more hip-hop. vintage voice yeah and like not vintage as like vintage as in like NOS no not vintage as <laughs> no. like even old hip hop but just like old feeling material like the instrumentals were old like babushka like, yeah it just felt yes. like very retro style yes I, I really enjoyed it and he's just really been building on his charisma since um 2017's packs that he released but um last year in 2019 he released it wasn't even close earlier in the year which was hilarious uh it was i thought it was really funny like a lot of his a lot of his like one-liners he had some really great features on there he really knew how to utilize his production yeah. and his his uh voice to make it just seem really like you said old yeah and, like, vintage sounding uh it was one of our one of our favorites of the year but then not only that he dropped a transportation like concept album called transportation like a little later in the year probably around the half halfway point of the year and um it was i don't think it really stood up to it wasn't even close but it was still like a ton of fun yeah there's a great honorable mention for us um i think that drew really worked off of the the concept of that and i think really painted a picture of like his Native, surroundings yeah, like yeah brooklyn that he like grew up in and, and also it's a rocket ship <laughs> yes um, every every and everybody the knows that there's a rocket ship in the middle of new york city but on uh december 23rd drew finished his 2019 with uh the surprise release of jewelry um which talks about his jewish heritage and celebrating uh being jewish and i guess kind of lamenting on like some of the problems that jewish people have had yeah. in america um it, it's it's a Hanukkah celebration. As he coined he's, on, he his, band on camp. his band camp. Uh, he, he, ta- he even did like a secret ha- Hanukkah show with Makami. I didn't know that. Yeah, he, <laughs> he like put on the secret show that was just for Hanukkah. It was him and Makami. And Makami didn't take off his cowboy hat or like bandana the entire time. He never takes off his I bandana. Know. He's full gimmick all the time. It's <laughs> I can't believe it. Every picture I see of him, like, he'll meet people on the streets. He, I don't think he's, like, a, a dick or anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just doesn't take it off. Dude doesn't take off his mask. I think it's, it's funny. like It's, you gotta go gimmick all the time. Uh, it, this, this record was executive produced by Makami with other production by The God Fahim, Quelle, Chris, Preservation, Eden, and Cohen Beats. I think that Quelle, uh, in particular kills it on here. Yeah. Because it's, like, uh... Like tracks that they've collaborated on before, like Scoop of Dirt, like that style of just like filth and murkiness in the yeah. production, how like the bass is really heavy, the d- drums are pretty distant, but they're still like bumping. I think that yeah. really resonates with a lot of tracks and it also resonates with the style Euro Droog's going for. So, as this album, I think it's the most ambitious Droog's had to date. I think, uh, I don't like it as it, it don't like it as much as it, it wasn't even close because it wasn't even close. It was very loose and it's just like charisma could just ooze out of him. This uh, it's way more refined. It's way more tight. Um, and not to say it's bad because I think this is really good, but I, I think it's just a different type of beast. Um, I, uh, I think oh, he yeah. he really works with his strengths still. Like I think it's, he's still hilarious. I think he's still really good at telling stories and being interested and being. Uh, sentimental at times which is nice like on tracks uh, stoop kid where he's going over his past and kind of showing kind of how his upbringing and how kind of shitty it was in a sense or just kind of the murkiness of america as a concept anyway i wouldn't even say his like upbringing was shitty i just feel like his environment he was like kind of scared of new york when yeah. he was younger and now i feel like he's kind of like grown into it he's become what he was afraid of yeah uh, you get great tracks like Jutang with, uh, I think he's a Jewish reggae artist, <laughs> uh, Matt Ishawa. I don't, how, how would you pronounce it? Uh, I can't Matisse. read words. I can't read words, so. Matishwu. Uh, I guess. Dude, I have no idea. Uh, which he brings a very sense of, uh, like, 
um, panic in a sense. Like it's very weird because it works really well. I don't think like a reggae artist would work well over like Drew's like kind of shocking style or is like shocking filth. Yeah, that's a, it adds a really cool chorus. Like that, yeah. the hook that he does is I think really catchy. Yeah, it just ties the whole track together. Um, my I guess my personal like favorite moments is probably like the front half of this. Yeah, I really enjoyed like the intro with Makami is is I think like Hebrew chants. Uh, yeah, from, that's from what Drew. I thought. It was either Hebrew, but I know uh, Makami is uh, Haitian. Creole. Yeah, yeah. So it could be that I have no I, idea. I would definitely say it was Hebrew. It would make more sense. And then uh, going into Ju Tang with production by Quelle Chris. This was uh, we got a little sample of this before the record was mm. was uh, put out and I think that 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 hook that like reggae hook mm. just really ties everything together with some really great uh, verses by from Droog on here moving into BDE which is kind of a sequel to RST yeah on, it wasn't even close with the same features Makami and Doom on <laughs> here again um, I find this to be one of one of the most compelling tracks it was a lot of fun yeah uh, Doom has some really great what I really uh, like about this track here. is they they have a little audio snippet of uh, this dude saying music in the sixties, seventies isn't good as that's people remember. Yeah, that's but one like of they, they they set it up to where Doom's verse is kind of isolated in a sense. And I really yeah. like that because he needs like not that he needs it, but like he's, he's too big. <laughs> no, but he's like he's a legend at this point, and it's nice for him to be kind of like separated from Drew and Mach. Yeah, not that they like need to because RST they were like on the same level, but like it's nice to have Doom have his own like little segment because I feel like with his career he kind of deserves it. I I like the snippets as well. Yeah, talking about like oh everybody loves the '60s, but mm -hmm. then like at the end, um, I'm not sure if it was supposed to be like incredibly poignant, but I did find it to be like more of a poignant moment on here where they talked about like this, these cigar chomping guys are saying like, well, it sell. I don't know. Put this experimental <laughs> music out. At the very end, he's like, those cigar guys were were less of a danger to music than these, like, young, hip producers ever will be. Yeah. I thought that was, I, I thought that was, like, really interesting that he feels that way. <laughs> but also, I think that it's it's true, like, once you actually think about it. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Cloutfire has this killer line. <laughs> I just love this line. It made me laugh so much. Where Drew says, "My new aesthetic. If you don't like Drew, you're anti-Semitic." That's too funny. I just. <laughs> There's also a really great sample of the the opening rip of Rhapsody in Blue, that clarinet rip all the way up. Yeah. Um, which I thought was awesome and just really like a very small thing, but that just entered the public domain like very recently. So you're allowed to do that now. <laughs> as soon as it was, he jumped on it. I feel like that also really paints. New York in like a certain sense. I feel like after you've seen Fantasia 2000, you can never think of anything different than like a city skyline being drawn. Yeah, like for a lot of this, it gives me a lot of impressions of New York, but also like a gritty gangster film or like a Scorsese film. Mm -hmm. Just like this, that, that type of just rough urban area, which I think Drew is really... is the Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Drew and Makami... Uh, collaborate pretty well on here. I think they've always collaborated pretty well, They're but I think best it, friends. I think it works on here uh, really well. They just fit off each other. They're just they're the same cut of cloth, but they fill different points. If that makes sense, like yeah. Makami, I've been trying to like figure out how to define his voice, and it's just like because like he's kind of high pitched, but he really isn't. It's, I find him to, like I don't know. I think more like volume. He's yeah. very soft spoken. But also, I like that because, yeah. like, like it's not like Droog is really like you listen to like a solo mock record like uh, Wapkan Joj, and it was like literally uh, all Makami just being like very soft, yeah. a lot of like repetition. But then you listen to Droog, and he's just like <laughs> <Yeah>. really abrasive <laughs> and aggressive towards everybody. Yet they're like best friends, and they work really well together. Yeah, uh, so soft, but like still scratchy. Yeah, that's what I think is probably the best way to find it. But I think they like fill the same. Parts like the contrast works really they well. They play off of each other really well. Diamonds has this uh, sample from Kanye West, the Diamonds and Sierra Leone, yeah. Rihanna with Diamonds. I think there's a Q-tip track. Yeah, the whole tribe. like the whole like hook of this is just a bunch of 
it's like a patchwork of different samples yeah. all thrown together. Which is really interesting how they think they're just flown together really well. And the track's yeah. talking about how this guy sells his soul to three Jewish men. <laughs> and he goes to a comedy club and says some like terrible shit. So, yeah, says something like and then, completely then off the, the wall. And then the mob comes and takes his family. <laughs> and then it was all just a dream. dream. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I think that's a good story. It's, it's an interesting story about telling your story. Drew's a little bit more narrative on this at times, which I think is really nice. Like on Generations, where he's telling the story of uh, uh, a family with hopes and aspirations of coming to America and being free, and then their son, their grandson, comes is finally in America, yeah. and then he gets killed. So, like, is the concept of America actually as good as the dream or the vision of right. it actually is, which is pretty... Nice, and then I already talked about Stoop Kid, just kind of Drew's nostalgia. Drew got on uh, previous tracks on Pax was pretty like he brings a sense of like nostalgia. This and, was a very nostalgic track because I feel like the hook talks about like when you were a kid, they say be all you want to be, be the change you want to see, yeah. be what you want to be, or whatever. Like, I think every kid in America got told that same yeah. thing, like whether you were Jewish or black or white or whatever school you went to, yeah. like, you got the same, you got the same message and I, I thought it was really interesting that like Droog and Fahim are both bringing that up when I Trevor heard that in Ohio the <laughs> same way that Droog heard 15 years ago like 15 years before I did in New York City like I don't know I thought that was like a really really interesting like generational thing yet we all like understood it also he brought up like Hey Arnold yeah. watching Hey Arnold which was like stuff that we did as well yeah. I, f I felt like we we're all on the same level there it was a very <laughs> nostalgic time uh, Babushka 2 which is the sequel to uh, Babushka also I forgot Babushka to mention one. <laughs> Babushka yeah uh, Mrs. Cloudfire I forgot to mention it's very similar in production to uh, Funeral Dirge so a lot of these tracks take from yeah it wasn't even close, which I think is really cool. That it kind of like that was another Quelle one. Yeah, classified. Um, but Babushka too. He's talking about uh, culture vultures in a sense, and they kind of like this is not like an original concept of like just shitty white people, but like it gets me to appreciate my own form of pretentiousness because at least I'm myself <laughs> in a sense. Not to like pat my own back, but like at least I'm stupid in my own way. Yeah. Like, I just make terrible jokes that are not funny, and... <laughs> I think Babushka 1 is better. Babushka 1's better, because it, 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 it proves... Uh, Drew said grandma. that... <laughs> Drew said that this year. I'm really excited for this year, because Drew said he's opening for Primus. <laughs> 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 now he's to fill up the promise. Uh, but Babushka 2, he's talking about culture. Babushka just has the great line, uh, the great opening line. All I hear is culture this, culture that. The culture list talk culture crap from a cozy cul-de-sac. When my last shit why my last year not take off yet culture ain't nothing but the child of cardi b and offset <laughs> that's just the basic a great cold open to that track um last thing i want to talk about is jutang forever the reprise uh which has the same feature on it and it's just kind of underwhelming and it kind of just leaves this album on just a cold note yeah um, I, it's not terrible by any means, but it's just like, I, I don't get, think, no, I, I think that the hook of, of the Jutang and Jutang forever, like, I feel like that's kind of the voice of the album. Like that's what resonates in my head when I think about like this record. Um, because like it is like very reggae, but also like it uses like a lot of the same like modes and scales as a lot of like Jewish music, yeah. like Klezmer and Hebrew yeah. chants and that kind of thing. So like, I feel like that ties things back to the beginning pretty well, but I almost wish it would have been an outro with more like Hebrew yeah. chants. I think that would have been or, uh, a good outro. I just, I just think that even, like even the greatest I ever do, it would have been a fine outro too. Just like the chemistry seems a little bit different from the intro. I just think it just doesn't work out well. Yeah. I think the return to the concept isn't as solid as the initial concept itself. Yeah, so. uh, but overall, I think this is good. I think it's Drew's most ambitious project to date. Uh, I think he has a lot of fun with the concepts and the narratives on this album, and he pays heritage. He pays homage to his heritage by still being himself, yeah. which is nice. Like he doesn't just like say that he is this, but he more or less uh, shows that he is this by still bringing out the original personality traits he has to begin with, which is nice. Yeah. He doesn't lose himself in his heritage. Which is really interesting, uh, but keep in mind all scores. If you tell me, it's right now I'm filling out an eight plus on this. I really liked it, and I hope to hear more from Drew soon. This is a good way to close off his decade, 
and to start a new one. Yes, I'm really excited for what he's going to do. He just released a new single with uh, the late Prodigy yeah. called Crab Cakes, and it was really good. So I'm hoping that we're going to get something else uh, this I, year. I, I got a feeling we will here at some point. Perhaps a beach-themed album. <laughs> I'm also gonna give this an eight plus. I'm a I'm a big Droog fan. It's really grown on me. I'm just a trying lot. to think about what a beach themed album would it's be. It's got Jimmy Buffett on it. <laughs> That's about it for that one. Mark Hobby is just wearing a swimsuit, but he still has it's a bandana. Still, he's got a bandana on his waist too. <laughs> Or no, the bandana is the same. It's like the same pattern as his as a swimsuit. <laughs> That's that, that visual of Makabe lighting the menorah in the uh, what is it the uh, BDE music video is fantastic. Is Makabe Jewish? I don't know. I don't think he is. But <laughs> that makes it even funnier. I think it makes it better. <laughs> uh, okay. 